Welcome back to our Busting Addiction and Its Myths podcast. I'm Bruno J, and I have updated the introduction to our episodes in order to address an issue that we cannot ignore, nor do we want to. It looks like COVID-19, the coronavirus, will be with us for some time, some say for another year or two. People are as frightened as they ever have been. They seek safety for their families above all, protection from the virus and from economic insecurity. But many families also face an added burden, drug addiction and alcoholism in their own homes, and what to do about it. There's something you should know. We, Safe House Rehab Thailand, were founded on the idea of safety. We hold on to the truth that clients deserve to come to a treatment clinic where they can at least feel safe and sound. Devoting ourselves to safety first gives us the firm foundation upon which everything else is constructed, hence our name, Safe House Rehab Thailand. Thailand has been recognized as one of the world's safest places to be during the pandemic. Further, we at Safe House have made the right adjustments so that clients and staff remain and feel safe and sound. Masks are mandatory as is social distancing, mandatory hand cleaning, daily blood oximeter readings, which is an early warning measure. And if by chance someone, anyone doesn't feel well, the local hospital in Bang Bung is only minutes away. My podcast, Busting Addiction and Its Myths, is dedicated to serving families of still suffering addicts and alcoholics by providing evidence-based advice and insight so that you can make a better informed decision on what to do and what not to do. We are sponsored by Safe House Rehab Thailand, dedicated to a modern approach to recovery, which means that we absolutely outperform traditional rehabs when it comes to diagnostics, technology, and aftercare. To learn how we can help, just visit safehouserehab.com where we post the latest news or send us an email at contact at safehouserehab.com. Welcome back to Busting Addiction and Its Myths. This is Season 4, Episode 10. I'm Bruno J, and I've chosen to call this episode, Is My Teen Becoming an Addict? I've learned from many parents of, the, of then-teenagers who went on to become full-blown addicts that they, the parents, wish they had recognized the signs of early addiction in their teenagers so that they might have been able to arrest the development of the disease and save themselves the heartache that followed. One or two signs does not a pattern make and can be often explained away as innocuous. But if you're watchful, you might be able to draw a picture of what your teen is actually up to behind the scenes. The sooner you can shine a light on it, the better are the chances of making a course correction that might actually save your child's life in the long run or save him a lifetime of, uh, of agony, and you too. Is he or she, and are you, reluctant to talk about alcohol and drugs? Is a question. If you are reluctant to talk about alcohol and drugs, it could be that you need to learn more about addiction and about how to approach your teenager on a very sensitive topic. One great resource on the topic is to be found at www.drugfree.org, but there are many other resources to be found online. The important thing is to educate yourself on what the signs are, and learn how to conduct a conversation, which is not a confrontation, and that would get you nowhere guaranteed. You can readily see the gap of the difference between a confrontation, which suggests frustration and anger, and a conversation, which is about seeking understanding, which is where you want to go. Before we get there, we might want to see if you can check any of the following boxes. Has your child's personality changed noticeably? Does he or she have sudden mood swings and unpredictable behavior that can't be explained? Does your child seem to be losing old friends and spending time with a new group of kids, friends about whom you know little or who are known as party, a party bunch? Is uh, your child unable to account for large sums of money or have you had objects or money disappear from your home? Does your child defend his or her right to drink? Have you seen physical evidence of drug or alcohol use? And has your child lied about using drugs or explained it away such as, oh, that wasn't me, that, that's Billy's dope. Good luck with that one. And this is for parents. Do you conceal information about signs of drug abuse from each other? Why? This is where the family dynamic comes in. Allow me to explain. If yours is an otherwise healthy family, then both sp spouses need to talk about your feelings and prepare for the conversation with your teen together. If the family dynamic is dysfunctional, then there's always a chance of the teen playing one spouse off against the other. Worst case scenario is if one spouse is also using and the family as a whole is in the grip of the family disease, then the points I make are kind of moot. 
if you're both using, it's highly unlikely that you would even tune into what you're trying to convey now. That's the real tragedy. The audience for my kind of podcast is not the active addict or alcoholic because with them it's in one ear and out the other. My message is intended for those who love an addict or alcoholic and are looking for the insight on how to make their lives better. What surprises and irritates them and makes them somewhat resentful toward a messenger like me, <laughs> me is this. The reality is that you are, bottom line, 100% powerless over addiction, even though the cunning disease might have you thinking, aha, I gotcha. When I say, so when I say make your life better, I mean this, getting to an emotionally peaceful place, attaining a healthy, loving detachment from your addict and his or her disease, and taking much, much better care of yourself. Breaking the grip of the enmeshment and codependency with your addict or alcoholic so that you begin to live a joyful and inspired life on your terms. That's our long-term goal. So even though you suspect that your teen might be approaching drug addiction, of which you might know something by now, you go to your Al-Anon meeting and share your worry or call your sponsor or speak to an AODA therapist. The last thing you need now is to start the cycle of codependency, which has you trying to control his or her behavior in a battle which you are sure to lose, I guarantee you. So, see how you've answered these questions about your teen as you become more aware of the potential need for a guided conversation, not an angry confrontation. If your child is indeed starting to use or experiment with drugs, then his or her grades will not fall from A's to D's. Rather, you'll see, likely see a drift from his usual B's to C's. And if you have a chance to observe, see if he's putting in time for his, uh, putting in time for his homework. These days, it's a real challenge to know what he or she is doing with free time. And this is the real crux of the matter. Even in families with teens who consistently get A's, research has shown there's little similarity as to how homework is actually done. Most, is done, most homework is done in an environment that seems distracting. Earphones, TVs, laptops, phones in use, and so on. The one student sitting quietly at her desk reading is the rarity. Research has also shown that 50% of high school students spend about an hour a night doing their homework. So let's call that an average. But here's the problem. The amount of time doing homework does not necessarily correlate to getting good grades. Many parents and educators believe there is simply too much of it. The National PTA recommends 10 minutes of homework per night per subject, and that's not an awful lot. That might get you to an hour. Given that some school administrations insist on a ton of homework, I am not surprised that students and even their parents are expressing their frustration. And if you add the economic pressure families are facing today, that is yet another layer of stress that can fuel unhealthy behavior. There's a couple of other sy symptoms to watch for before we net this discussion to its conclusion. Watch for the onset of these physical symptoms as well. Excessive fatigue, disturbed sleep patterns, chronic cough, vomiting, loss of appetite, red, uh, red eyes, dilated pupils. Emotional symptoms include depression, loneliness, paranoia, withdrawal. And of course, you know, a refusal or a backing off of, do, of, of investing any time in doing homework is yet another sign. If you answered yes to three or more questions, chemical use is probably causing big problems already. And if you answered yes to two, there's a good chance of making course correction. Allow me to share a story that illustrates my point about a course correction. A personal friend, a colleague in the ad business, suspected his son was into marijuana, but the kid always gave him the slip. The family lived in a big historic farmhouse, which my friend grew up in. They lived on what was once the family farm that became part of a wealthy rural neighborhood, so there were plenty of places to hide and play and smoke some dope. I can relate. As I grew up on a 150-acre uh, tobacco farm in Ontario, now there are lots of places to hide and smoke and drink and fool around. So this kid had his own car, and at 18, life was a breeze, but he wasn't spoiled. His dad had him working the chores, including caring for the horses and so on. One night, he gets thrown in jail for doing 120 miles per hour and for driving under the influence, having blown up 0.12% in a state in Wisconsin where 0.08% is the legal limit for alcohol. So he gets to call his dad at midnight from jail. Then the police tell dad that he can bail his son out, and dad says, no, I'll pick him up tomorrow when I'm good and ready. Let him stew. The conversation that followed was guided by love. The son was so unprepared for his dad's expression of love for his boy, the son broke down and cried like a baby admitting everything that had been going on and why. What followed was a course correction that included the son paying back his dad for the fines involved, 
a commitment to improving his grades, leaving some bad company behind and communicating more openly with his mom and dad. A happy conclusion like this isn't guaranteed, but it is possible. At least you can be guided to do the right thing for your own well-being. So as you try to figure out what you should do, or how to think about this, my advice is twofold. Get help for yourself first so that you are not drawn further into the whirlpool of codependency. As I mentioned earlier, check out al and or contact a qualified AODA therapist for yourself. Second, avail yourself of the many resources that are available to help families and addicts, whether they're recovering or not. These include the National Association for Children of Alcoholics, NACOA.org, lovefirst.net, L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T.net, a website for families interested in intervention. Parents, the anti-drug at theantidrug.com educates parents on teen drug use. The National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, which is at niaa.nih.gov, the official federal government website, offers the latest that science has to offer on the topic of alcoholism. And the National Institute on Drug Abuse, nida.gov, supports and conducts research on drug abuse and addiction. And there are free materials available for parents and teachers as well. So there's a lot of, res- a lot of resources for you to, to draw upon and to learn from and make a better decision. So what have we learned today? When it comes to your teen and potential drug abuse, one, look for a pattern that suggests secrecy and behavior that is off the norm along the lines I've I've outlined. Two, gaining a better understanding of the academic and social challenges facing your teen can only help you have a loving conversation with your teen when the time comes. Three, look to have a loving conversation, not a confrontation, ideally with both parents present. First, look to your own look to get your own state of mind in a good place. After all, this is as much about your own peace of mind as it is about the health of your son or daughter. And five, avail yourself of the many sources that can help you gain the insight and support you need in order to successfully navigate troubled waters. Thank you for tuning in today. It's my fervent hope we've given you new insight and new hope that will lighten your burden where our hearts go out to all who suffer the effects of addictive disorder. Please give us your feedback at info at safehouserehab.com. By all means, ask us any question you like, and we'll answer on air, if you will. And if you want to leave us your first name and city, we'll recognize you too, of course. This podcast is sponsored by safehouserehab.com, where we take a modern approach to recovery, something all families of those who suffer deserve. Tune in next week for more.